Good morning. Man, welcome home. Do we have anybody visiting for their very first time? All right, perhaps it's been a while since maybe we've seen some of you. We want to tell you how thrilled we are to have you back in the Lord's house, and we've enjoyed worshiping with you online through live stream and through all the different applications that God has made readily available for the church today. We're just so thrilled that we're able to stay in touch with each other and communicate. You know, uh, I suppose that we could get uh, easily depressed in the way that life has turned out right now. There's so many people that are stuck at home. They can't come out. Some are quarantined. Some some uh, just don't have transportation. Some still don't feel safe to come out. We're thankful that we're still on this side of this earth, that we can still together, whether it be here in the congregation or at home or on the street or on the uh, at the store, we can still lift up the Lord's name and thank him for all that he's done. The scripture, Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's who we hope you meet today, is the Holy Ghost. That when Jesus speaks to your heart and conviction comes, perhaps you're wondering, perhaps you were saved as a child, and somehow you've allowed yourself to wonder, God is willing to do wonderful things for you today, and he can bring you back to a place of peace, joy, and happiness. That's what he does best. He redeems. Father, we're thankful that you have met with us in days past, today, and the days to come. We pray that everything that's said and done today would bring glory to your most excellent name. Lord, there are many that are sick. There are many that just can't make it to church just yet. We ask you to send a special blessing to those families. Perhaps there's some that have lost loved ones. Perhaps there's some that, that have lost loved ones. We pray that you would meet the needs of these, that uh, everything would be all right in the souls. It would be well with your children. For it's in Christ's precious name we ask these things, and amen. Let's all stand. Sister Tanya, would you please come? We're going to do when we all get to heaven. Come on, church, get up. When we all get to heaven. How many is looking forward to that day? I tell you what, if you get there before me, Stay close to the gate, because when I hit the ground, I'm hitting or running, baby, wide open. When we all get to heaven, 113, and it'll be up here on the uh, screen for you. All right. Oh, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the
I'm an idiot. Oh, you already got that one. Uh, yeah, that's right. You should. She, I heard Shelly say, glory. <laughs> oh, Chris, come on now. Break it down here. Uh, by way of announcement, uh, next week, I, I know that it was on the video, but sometimes we don't pay attention to the video. Next week is Patriot Sunday. We're going to take the uh, Sunday evening Sunday school class off, and then we're praying about returning back the, the uh, in-house the following weekend. But as they used to say when I was a kid on the Batman, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Same bat channel, same bat time, same bat place. I'll be right back. How many remembers as a child meeting Jesus for the first time? You know, I know that a lot of times when we ask questions, people are leery to raise their hand. I understand. But maybe there's somebody here today that can't raise their hand. I pray before you leave here today that not only will you be able to raise your hand, but you'll be able to lift your voice in praise to know that there's an anchor that will hold you no matter how bad the storm gets. God's anchor is Christ Jesus, and he holds me. He'll hold you too. Yeah. 
My anchor has held Praise God. with him, but with Jesus Christ most of all. You know, I don't know if you know my testimony, but when we re did rededicate our life to Jesus Christ, the devil came through me, which I never thought that that would happen. I was like, you were called to preach. I wasn't called to preach. I just want to sit in a pew and rejoice and listen and, and, and just thank Jesus for what he's done for us. My manager and my friend at work, they would anoint me. That's how bad it got. They were anointing me and telling me, you know, telling Jesus, you know, help her, help her. But the thing about it is when Chris was called to preach, I knew it. When he came and told me, I knew it before he even told me. Yep. But I want to thank you for keeping my anchor. That's right. For keeping me and bringing me through that. That's that was, right. Yeah, I mean, it got to where I thought, are we going to divorce over here? And this? my fingers crossed, but I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Get away. Get away. But um, anyway, I just want to thank Jesus for all Praise the Lord. If it wasn't for him, you know, I ask him every day, revive me. That's right. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. I, I want it. And I know that it, it will happen through him, but we just have to believe. We have to have faith, and it only comes through Jesus Christ. That's right. So pray for us. 
37 years. She met him on the road. She had gone to see the tomb where Jesus lay. But then she heard the stranger speak. Mary, I'm the one you seek. She ran to the disciples. Through her tears, they heard her say. When he spoke to me, I knew it was the Savior. When he spoke to me, he called me by my name. The stone that sealed my heart with fear rolled suddenly away. For when Jesus spoke, I knew I'd never be. Living only for myself, but that only led to pain and misery. is thankful today that they ain't the same because the anchor holds. Amen? I know this, that, that a lot of us are feeling the anchor. We'll go ahead and let the kids go down. I tell my wife, go get them, Tiger. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> For those watching at home, she's wearing a Tiger costume today, or ears. Um, but uh, I sure am thankful to be back in church. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that... Uh, Glad to have the opportunity to have gone on vacation, um, but uh, in times like these, the pastor don't like to leave the ship, amen? Uh, when, when waters are rough, the captain doesn't like to leave, amen? Uh, but uh, it was good for Sydney and I to get away with the kids. The kids had a blast, and it gave us a moment to, uh, uh, let me just break down some, uh, some barriers and be honest for a minute, gave Sydney and I some time for, for each other and some time just to cry, amen? Uh, we've been in a season of, uh, of serving through trials, and when you serve through trials, you, you suppress a lot of emotions, a lot of, uh, a lot of things, the thoughts that goes through your mind, and, and I know last Sunday we were on a golf cart ride, uh, and you would think everything's beautiful out there, and, and um, 
Sydney was driving the golf cart in the front, and I just started crying. And if she, I was going, I was thinking, man, if she looks through the mirror and sees tears in my eyes, she's going to think that she's just a bad driver or something. So I put my sunglasses down, and I just cried. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had had a rough week all week long, but then I took a nap and woke up. And I'm thankful that he woke me up. Amen. And ever since then, uh, we've seen trials still. Amen. Uh, our, I think, I, I believe that our, uh, our air conditioner at home is on its last legs. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. And uh, so we don't know how that's going to come. Maybe we'll get another corona check. We'll put them all together and boom, we got a new one. But, but it, that's not the point. The point is... Even in times like these, God has still been good, and it was nice to get away and just get back to God. And through the fog, through all of the chaos, all of the strife, to focus back on Jesus and His goodness and, and His grace towards us, and, uh, and He helped us. And I want to preach a sermon th this morning uh, that He laid on my heart about 3 a.m. one morning uh, as I was driving. Uh, down to the beach and then as I was driving back he gave me the rest of it amen um, go ahead girl How about we do this, Miss Nancy? Everybody bow your head. We're all going to pray together right now. All right. Lord, we thank you for this day. Let's all join together in prayer, either in silent or in uh, out loud. But, Lord, we thank you, God, for being so good to us. Uh, Lord, you have blessed us beyond measure. Uh, Lord, the fact that we're even in the church house today is a true miracle in this day and time. Lord, with all of the, the focus and the, on the trials and tribulations that are around us, you still have a church that says we're going to church and we're going to meet together and we're going to glorify your holy name. And God, I ask you today that we could focus on you. As the world around us gets foggy, as the world around us seems in despair and looking for an answer, Lord, that the church would stand up like a beacon in the night and begin to lift high the blood-stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, this is our generation. You gave it to us to live with. You gave it to us to deal with. Lord, may the church take the banner on and stop laying down and getting run over God but together unite in under one voice shouting glory to Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord I pray that you'd move today in a mighty way Lord I pray that you'd empty me of self and sin. Let me see through the fog today Lord God and I give you the glory for it. You're wonderful, you're magnificent Lord it's the Super Bowl and I pray that together we get on one accord and leave no doubt for it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's look together at Acts chapter number 1. Acts chapter number 1. As we see that times are about to get foggy in the lives of these disciples. 
And Jesus is, uh, they ask him, because, you know, you get excited. When you see a miracle happen, you get excited, do you not? Amen. And you start wondering, what's this mean? So just imagine you've seen the resurrected Savior, and you start thinking, what does this mean? What's going to happen here? And so you, you, you've heard all of these stories your whole life about how that when he comes back, he's going to set up his kingdom. So you ask the question, and it's a reasonable question. Lord, is this when you're going to take dominion? Is this when you're going to take power and restore Israel to its former glory? Are you going to suppress the hand that suppresses us in Rome? Are you going to fight for us? Are you going to take over? Are you going to restore your preeminence and the power of Israel? Here's what Jesus says in verse 7. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know. <laughs> Thanks, man, right? You're totally cleared up that mud. Amen. It's not for you to know the time or the season which the Father hath put in His own power. Now look at this. But ye, he said, all of that's His power, but I'm here to tell you about another piece of power. Amen. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in the uttermost you're in, this, in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. Praise God for that kind of power. And, he, and look at this. And when he had, the, had spoken these things. Oh no. While they beheld. He was taken up. And a cloud received him. Out of their sight. The Bible says. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven. As he, he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? Look at this, underline, underline this, get a tattoo gun, put it on your forehead, this same Jesus. <laughs> which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Lord, I thank you for this day. Lord, we want to give you glory. You're amazing. Amen. Let's take a look at verse number 9 together. It says, And when he had thus spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud, received him. Out of their sight. Present in sight, talking. Present out of sight, leaving. A fog, a cloud covered them like a fall, or covered him like a fall, and they were left standing there, staring up, hoping to see one last glimpse of him, standing in what the, the Bible declares in awe. Catching flies with their mouth wide open. Just staring up. <laughs> you see what happened was. As they was left there. As they, he gives them directions on where to go. How to go. Why to go. He gives them directions with the great commission. And gets them excited. And then he begins to send them up. The navigation system is now gone. Amen. And now they are living their lives. Lives with absent from the visible Lord Jesus. And so what are they doing? They're doing exactly what you do when He disappears from your life. You begin to look up and go, oh Lord. Trying to get some type of navigation. I wonder this, have you ever had tried to navigate through fog? Just try to go in a direction, but it's so foggy you can't see on the other side. I said I got this at 3 a.m. in the morning. I don't believe that the Lord uh, does things uh, uh, haphazardly. He was speaking to me, and I didn't know it. Amen? 3 a.m., we, we got up at 1.30, got the car packed on, on Monday morning last two weeks ago, and headed to the beach. By 3 a.m., we were up past Beckley. 
And I don't know if you've ever drove that late at night, but up past Beckley, there's a blanket that lays on the earth. Amen? So we're just driving along. I've got my earbuds in, so I ain't keeping nobody awake. I'm just blaring some Frank Sinatra. Amen? Just having some good, just a good old time going down the road. Sydney's asleep. Ava's asleep. Titus is asleep and snoring. Here I am, just glory, just, I mean, yeah, let's fly, let's fly away. We're just getting out of, out of Dodge, hey amen, and I'm, so I'm excited to get, get going, and all of a sudden, here comes the blanket, and the old Toyota Sierra, manliest vehicle I ever owned, hey amen. Nothing says manhood like a minivan. Hallelujah. And I'm driving in. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. I'm driving that little silver bullet inside of that, that sur- surrounding fog. And it encompasses us. And I began to look around and I'm like, I can't see very far. And Brother Charlie, I'm left with a choice. Do I turn around and go where the the fog isn't? Do I pull off to the side of the road and wait the fog out and lose precious time that the kids are sleeping and distance I will gain while they sleeping? Or do I just grab onto the steering wheel and pray that I make it to the other side. <laughs> she just quoted Carrie, the gospel according to Carrie Underwood. <clears throat> I, I just decided in my heart, if we's going to go out, we's going out together. Amen. We's going to go out, going on vacation. But we were taking the permanent location. Amen. So I just gripped it and let it rip. So And I drove that little silver bullet all the way through that thing. And I started thinking. And the Lord started talking to me. Sometimes. I said sometimes you just got to grip and rip, honey. You got to let her go. You've got to get to the other side. But I found this to be true. That everybody under the sound of my voice right now is experiencing fall in their Christian life. Amen? Everybody under the sound of my voice is going through the foggy times of 2020. If I could if I could give you a slogan for 2020, it'd be everything every day it's something. Amen? Yeah, amen. Just take a take a take a Take a little gander at your news feeds this morning and you see all kinds of COVID facts and miss facts of COVID-19 coronavirus updates. And we find out that, that everybody knows something about it, but ain't nobody knows nothing about it. Amen. And we would, we would start looking through our scro- scrolling and we see serious social issues that are taking place not, in, not, not over in a third world country, honey. It's happening in your country, the number one country in all of the world. It's happening in the streets of your cities. Hey, listen, honey, I'm here to tell you there's real issues going on right now. And there are petty issues going on right now. I ain't never seen more Christians arguing about stupid stuff more in my life. Every Facebook theologian gets out and writes down their Charles Spurgeon quotes and and tells everybody, well, Spurgeon said this. And and here's what D.L. Moody said. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter unless it's in the Bible. Are we having fun in church today? Because I am. We got basic individual rights that were given to us mandated in 19 or no whatever 1773 right I'm a history teacher I ain't got a clue man probably missed that on the praxis amen 
They were given to us. They were mandated. They were amended. They were, they were told these are the basic rights. And you have the freedom to assemble. And it's been taken away from you. You have the freedom of speech. And it's been taken away from you. You had the freedom to write things down. You had the freedom to get in the house of God. And worship God however you want to. And that's being taken away from you. Listen, honey, we've got some real issues taking place. You see, we have to, we have to go, we want to go to church, but we got to jump through a hundred hoops to get in the church house. But when you jump through all 100, they'll throw 101 at you. Then you jump through those, and then the church decides that it'd rather have a barbecue. Hey, Amen. Go boating. Hallelujah. Or go up on the hill and do God only knows what. Preach, I don't like when you go on vacation. I love it. <laughs> go on next week, come back the following week and preach the rest of this. You see, we wonder why the church is not essential. It's because the church decided years ago that it wouldn't be essential. Hey, Amen. We, uh, we have openly embraced blatant sin. And we celebrate it. Every Christian, mm, listen, under, uh, we've embraced it. People celebrate it who tote the same Bibles as you do that talks about that same sin. Oh, let's glorify it. What's the Bible say about it? It says it's sin. Let's clear that up. That's easy. So's gluttony. It says that. Hey, man. When you go down to Myrtle Beach, stay away from Benjamin's. All you can eat seafood buffet. Or go twice in one day, you sinner. <clears throat> There's threats of major war every day. Every day there is something going on in the art of warfare. Jesus said, that's not a surprise to me. I took my boys up on Mount Olive a long time ago and I wrote some, I told them some things about this. Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall and, and deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. You shall see you... Uh, or see that ye uh, be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. <laughs> for nation shall rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, mm, pestilence, woo, earthquakes in diverse places like even Colorado and Utah. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up by, to be afflicted. You, the church, honey. The church. Not, the, not just the disciples. He was talking to the founder. Mm, he, the, the, the people he would leave the church to. He founded the church. They made it bigger. Amen. Amen. All right. Then he said, then shall they deliver you up in, to be afflicted. And they shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. If you operate under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, everybody going to hate you. That's the Bible. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. Mm -hmm. Wonder why there's so many fights in churches today. It's because the church is divided. Ye shall hate one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and many shall be deceived and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. We see all these things going on. Amen. Oh yeah, we, we, we see it. But the love of many shall wax, what the Bible say? Cold. Now let's, let's look a little bit deeper into the news feed. Yeah. While all of this junk's going on around us, while the world is sinning at a great, mm, a great and mighty rate, people who sit in pews of gospel preachers who are sound and fundamental in doctrine have decided that churches on Sunday, Monday through Saturday is mine. 
and their news feed tells it all about. We've got some Christians that are oblivious. Amen. Oblivious. Everybody trying to find somebody to give them sympathy so that, or, or to, to show them some type of love. And they, everybody looking to be instant. or in, is it, Let me see. Insta-famous. Is that it? Look at me. Is it Insta-famous? Yeah. Some, they on that TikTok app. Amen. Swatting flies and grabbing on to, uh, 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 grabbing on to lightning bugs. Amen. Y'all ain't never seen them do it? Watch them walking down the mall whenever the mall opens up. I watched them on the beach the other day. They were sitting there doing them swatting flies and grabbing. Let me, let me do it for you. <laughs> Tell me I'm lying. Swatting flies and grabbing lightning bugs. Amen. I ain't got a clue that the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And all we care about is doing the famous dance of somebody else. And we got people posting videos all the time that glorify themselves. We are trying to focus on Jesus. We're saying, look at me. Look how, look how strong I am. Look how smart I am. Look how fast I am. Let me say this. Look how stupid you is. Sorry. The reason why I'm talking to Chris is because I'm afraid somebody get offended in here. If you ain't offended by now, <clears throat> just wait. Because <laughs> I'm going to read the Bible and that's offensive. You see, this is not a surprise. This is not a surprise to the Word of God. The Holy Spirit penned it through the man's hand named Paul. Said this. Hey, t- tell Timothy this. This know also. That in the last last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Mm. Let me stop right there. Back it up. Reverse. Wind it back. Amen. Let's see. Look at it. It says disobedient to parents. And immediately after this it says unthankful. How many parents know that we got some gen- a generation of kids that you can give, 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 give. They still disobedience. You're going to have to spank their bottom. Amen. And Christmas comes around, they're going to want something by New Year's. Tight. <clears throat> Unholy, without natural affection. Truce breakers, false accusers, incont- whatever. Yeah. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. From such turn away. You see, you take all of this that we're experiencing, and that's just on your news feed, honey. If we come out of your phone for a minute, which would do some of you some good, amen? Come out of your phone for a minute. Live in the world. Breathe the air. Live in the world. Breathe the air. And you'll find out that your life is not roses. All of that's going on while your AC's going out, while your, while your faucets are leaking, while your car don't run right, has a little shimmy and a shake in it. All of this is coming after you. Listen, if I could set down the deacons of this church, uh, let them be interviewed by you, you could find out that every last one of them over the last two years has went through utter hell for you. Amen. They haven't listened. This church is successful, and that means the devil's coming after it and it goes after leadership first that man has bore a burden that little Daniel boy amen has bore a lot of burdens (laughs) he's just a baby amen (laughs) every last one of our leadership team has faced real issues and real trouble ain't complained about it one time ain't fussed about it ain't got on their face space and said woe is me they just been living life amen say what's the problem the world's out to get you Satan is seeking to devour you he wants you he wants you like a fat man needs steak amen (laughs) 
You see, it's getting foggy. And all I can see is the fog, preacher. Preacher, I just can't see. I just see the fog. I look, I look, I look, and I can't see him anymore. Because the fog is so thick, I can cut it with a knife. Preacher, what do I do? What do I do when it gets foggy? I sure am thankful that the Bible doesn't quit in the fog. When Jesus disappeared on the other side, the Bible says this in verse number 10. They looked steadfastly. They couldn't see him, but they stayed where they was. I said they couldn't see him, but they stayed where they was. They didn't go run and hide about it. They didn't go down downtown Jerusalem and proclaim that Jesus was gone. Jesus was dead. Jesus was disappeared. Listen, honey, they stayed, the Bible says, steadfastly. They stuck to it. You say, what they do, preacher? They focused. Not this time. Fish. They focused. They focused through the fog. I don't know what time it is. I got three points in a poem. <laughs> I went straight into Independent Fundamental Missionary King Game Bible Believing Baptist outline up here. And I ain't going to get to none of it. I. I um, how about we do this? I'll give you one this morning. i give you maybe two next week. And maybe another week after that. You see, because I think it's time that the church takes this seriously and begins to focus, get steadfast. Mm -hmm. Put your feet, plant your heels, honey, and say, I ain't moving. You see, because they did not move, the angel stopped by. Jesus said, I'm going to send somebody down to talk to them boys. I'll stand there all day. I got work for them to do. I just told them that go, to go preach the word. And they stand in there like. Jesus said, church, go preach the word. And we're like this. But he continued on. He said, you men of Galilee. Why stand you here gazing? <laughs> yeah. Is there anything today that's foggy in your life that you need to focus upon? Yeah. You say, what do I focus on? This same Jesus. <laughs> you see what happened when they focused on, focused through the fog? They saw the same Jesus. Amen. They didn't see him. Mm, they didn't see him with their physical eye. They began to understand him with their spiritual eye. You see, your physical eye will fail you every time, but it is your spiritual eye that will not set you wrong. Amen. If you're hooked up to, mm, if you hooked up to the Word of God, I promise you, you'll be in the will of God. But if you mm, change the Word of God, you'll stand in the way of God. Amen. Write that down. Amen. The angel said, "This same Jesus." He's a changeless Jesus. You say, well, I see, preacher, you'll see a changeless person. You'll see somebody who's amazing, who's wonderful, who's omniscient, who's all-powerful, who's all-knowing, who's all-loving, caring. Hey, listen, he ain't changed one bit. The author of Hebrews says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hey, in the past, in the present, in the future, he's the same. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah goes right there. This same. Same Jesus was the same Jesus that began as the word to speak the word and said light be and light was. This same Jesus said let the firmaments be divided and they were divided. He said let the sun rise in the daytime and let the moon shine at night. Give them some stars so they can see a little bit. That same Jesus was found in the garden walking hand in hand with Adam in the cool of the day. That same Jesus is the one who 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 spoke to Abraham and said uh, and Abraham decided to pay tribute to of 10%. Let me stop right there.
Told you I wrote an independent fundamental missionary, King James Bible believing Baptist sermon outline. <laughs> and it said 10%. <laughs> Sorry. Go back to your other ways, preach it, talking about my money. I'm talking about this is the same Jesus that Abraham stood and said, I'm going to give you tribute of everything that I got. Ten percent of it goes to you. Mm, Old Melchizedek, a picture of Jesus, hallelujah. Then old Jacob began to hang out uh, by himself, and Jesus said, I come down and have a wrestle with you. and We'll we'll horseplay a little bit. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, i got to get out of here. He said, but I'm going to leave you changed. Swap. He walked differently the rest of his life because he met Jesus. Listen, this same Jesus yesterday was standing in a burning bush that was not consumed and told Moses, go get my people. This same Jesus said, I'll get out of that bush and crawl up in a a cloud and I'll lead those same people out of Egypt in a cloud by day and a fire by night. Amen. And then that same Jesus, mm, hallelujah, I'm getting a little bit excited here just to look at it and, and that same Jesus decided to get off his throne in heaven come down as the captain of Lord's host when when mighty Joshua looked at the mighty walls of Jericho the captain of the Lord's host stepped out of heaven said look I show you something hey look at this sword it comes from heaven I'll make sure you don't have to use yours I use mine <laughs> Joshua had to step aside at the power of the captain of the Lord's host. Amen? Oh, look, look, we, we just looking at yesterday, honey. Yesterday he met up with David and blew his mind. And David said, I got to write this down. I got to talk about him a little bit. He said in Psalms 139, Oh, Lord, hmm, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsetting and mine uprising. Thou understandest the thoughts of far off. Thou compassest my, my path and, and my lying down. Thou art acquainted with my ways, for there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. He said such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I cannot attain it. Whether I shall go in from the Spirit or whether shall I, uh, whether shall I flee from thy presence. Uh, he said if I ascend it into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold thou art there. If I may take up the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, he said even right there will thy hand hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me that's what David said about him David said I'm going to tell my little boy about him I'm going to teach my little boy everything I know about Jesus. I'm going to do the best that I can. Hey, I'm, I'm broken. I'm messed up. I, I did some things that I shouldn't have done. But I want to, I want to make sure that, I know that my little boy knows a little bit about Jesus and has a little bit of, little bit of knowledge about that, that one who loved me and beset me behind and before it took a little bit of mm, let me take a time out right here. It took a little light time to sink in. Mama, Daddy, it may take time to sink in. You hear me? You be faithful. Time back in. <laughs> Solomon said, I got to know him. Oh, man, I fell in love with him. He said, I got to write some stuff down just like my daddy did. He said, he said in the Song of Solomon, chapter number five, he said, my beloved is white and ruddy. Y'all impressed yet? <laughs> he said he's the cheapest among 10,000. His head is the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves. And hallelujah. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm having camp meeting in my heart right now. Thinking about him, he said his cheeks are, are as a bed of spices, as a sweet flowers. His lips are like lilies dripping, uh, dropping sweet smelling myrrh. His hands are as, the, as rings set with the braille. His belly is 
bright as ivory, overlaid with sapphires. His legs is as pillars of marbles. That means it cannot be moved. He, he set in the sockets of fine gold. That means they cannot decay. He, his countenance is lead as Lebanon, excellent as the cedar. He's strong and he's mighty. His mouth is most sweet. And the Bible says that he, he wrote this last phrase down that you need to know. Yeah, he's altogether lovely. I don't know if you've met him, honey, but I'm here to tell you this morning, he's lovely. He's lovely. Daniel said he delivered me out of the hand of a lion. Amen. I was down there, and them three Hebrew boys come walking by and said, hurry him say, lions, who cares about some lion? He, he got down in the fiery furnace, uh, grabbed us by the hand and sang, ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes. We all get out of here. Amen. Yeah, you see, he, he said, mm. <laughs> you see, yesterday he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And his, with his stripes we are healed. Yesterday he rose again and all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. You say, what happened? I say this, that same Jesus who was willing to step off a throne in heaven, who was willing to interfere in the affairs of mankind, that that same Jesus uh, who showed all power and all majesty and all might decided that he would, he would take an old sinner and save him to the uttermost. That same Jesus will to, mm, that same Jesus. You say, preacher, it's getting foggy though. Preacher, it's getting foggy. I, I know all about that Jesus. I'm glad they got the air conditioner fixed. Also, otherwise, I couldn't keep my socks up. <laughs> Make some nice socks, amen. Uh, she was wondering where the color was. I kept it high today, amen. <laughs> we know about Jesus. But our news feed makes us foggy. We know he's altogether lovely. We've experienced. But it's foggy. Oh my, it's foggy. They tearing down statues. It's foggy. <laughs> Think I better respond to that and give some dumb opinion. <laughs> oh, I made it foggier. <laughs> they, they, oh, 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 32 cases because because somebody had joy at Myrtle Beach. <laughs> Oh, it's foggy. I don't want to go to church this Sunday because somebody there went to Myrtle Beach. Lord help. What me? <laughs> My water had cl was clear. Amen. Oh. We spend so much time in the fog that we cannot see. If we just stay steadfast and look up. There's a little boy holding a kite string. Amen. Looking up in the sky, an old man come by, said, son, what you doing? He said, I'm flying a kite. He said, boy, how do you know you're flying a kite? He said, it's too foggy. You can't see a kite up there. I don't see no kite. I, don't, I bet you got a balloon up there. He said, no, 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 sir, I've got a kite up there. I know it. He said, how do you know? He said, I hold on to this string. And every now and then, I feel the power of his pull. And it reminds me, I'm a kite. I'm up here doing kite things. And you might not be able to see me right now, but I'm dancing in the wind, honey. <laughs> if you say it's foggy, preacher, what do I do? It's foggy. You hang on. You stay steadfast to the same Jesus who yesterday hung out with all of them men in the past. And yesterday hung on the cross for your sins. You, you hold on to him, son. And you say, what will what, happen? If every now and then he'll say, you can't see me. But I'm up here dancing in the wind for you. And I'm, mm, I'm working some things out that you just can't see right now. But I promise you, I'm going to send you a little bit to help you. I'm going to show you my power. 
And I know some of you right now, and they're watching it fa- on, on the face space right now. And you're in here right now. It's foggy. Politicians are making it foggy. News Channel 13 making it foggy. Doug Harlow predicting fog every day. <laughs> you say, preacher, what I do? Grab on. Hold on. And wait for the tug. Steadfast. Daniel, this same Jesus that over two years ago <laughs> that you walked up to that altar and you laid down that bottle for him. Same Jesus that comes tugging on you in the fog. <laughs> Micah, that same Jesus that you gave up all them drugs for. <laughs> And now you're going, I don't know if I'm supposed to be a preacher or, or I'm supposed to work with the addicts or I could be both. Amen. I'm not, I just throw him under the bus in front of everybody. Amen. <clears throat> yeah. He, he ain't changed, baby. There ain't no virus that could change him. There's not social disorder that could change him. It ain't his injustice, it's yours. And I promise you, his same Jesus that died on the cross years ago, died for the souls of every one of us in here. And the same Jesus, I'm giving way next week, went up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of the Father, and uses power to intercede for you every day. Hang on. With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. I know it's getting foggy this morning. I know all day long, all week long, all month long, for six long months, it's been foggy. Get up every morning thinking the sun's going to shine and it's foggy. Grab your phone and begin to look around and it's foggy. You say, preacher, what I do? Grab on to the same Jesus. The same one that for history has been looking to show his power off in the lives of people. Let me ask you this. If you're here today or you're watching at home, let me ask you this question. Have you grabbed on to that Jesus? If you're here today and you say, Preacher, I don't know if I've ever been saved. I don't know if I've ever grabbed on to him. Preacher, will you, will you pray for me? I want to slip up my hand and give testimony to that fact. I'm going to step up here so the camera zooms in on me and not on you. All right, it's just you and me now. Just you and me. Preacher, I don't know if I've ever been saved, but I sure would like to know about this Jesus. Amen. I see that hand. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, yes. Amen. 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 I want to know about that Jesus. Maybe some Christians in the room will say this. Preacher, I want to give my hand up and high as I can and give the testimony that I'm saved and I know it. If Jesus comes or I should die, I'm ready to meet him. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Amen. Amen. Maybe some Christians in this room will say this, Preacher, in my life, in my life right now, I'm experiencing some fog. Will you pray for me that I stay steadfast and look up to Him? Here's my hand. Amen. Nearly every hand in the room. Let's do this. Let's take the social distance and throw it out in the building for just a minute. Throw your mask on or something. And let's go on down here to this old-fashioned altar. And let's all together get out of our seat right now and grab on to that lovely Lord Jesus. Hey, honey, I said it's time. Let's feel the tug of the power of Him. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Yeah, let's grab His power. I need His power. things here today he leads us and he guides us when we don't even know what step to take 
It will cleanse each spot, oh Lamb. Sing with me. The God, stand and sing, church. I come, I come. All right, ladies. Just as. Make it up. Come on, sing. Some of you can't sing today. You have a burden. Burdens can be lifted right now if you'll just come. Sing that first verse. Just as I am without one. Somebody needs to come. Come on. There's one more that needs to come. Sing it, church. with me. somebody cares for you. Oh. Amen. I'm sure I'm thankful for what God has done in this place this morning. Amen. Miss Nancy, park right there. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's a changeless Jesus. You know, we live in a generation, I'm not going to preach again, but we live in a generation that's trying to change Jesus. Amen. But he's still the same. Just hold him. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. I thank you for loving us and moving in this church this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I hand it back over to Brother Chris, and he, he talks to Space Book for a second and closes us out. 
Um, <clears throat> we have uh, some serving opportunities for you uh, to spread the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That same way. Uh, we want to, um, <clears throat> we're going to take some donuts. Amen. Because what's sweeter than Jesus? Amen. We're taking, we're going to take them to some uh, medical offices and other offices. If you, um, so we may enter some of your offices, amen, and bring some donuts with a sticker that says From Truth Baptist Church on it with some cards inviting people to church. And if you'd like your office to be donated, donutted, donutted, um, you know, uh, send Sydney a message I, and, uh, I think she has some helpers that's helping her with uh, getting that together uh, as far as uh, uh, organizationally. Uh, I think, it, Miss Caroline, does she talk to you about that? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So let them know that you'd like to be donate, donated. And uh, uh, because you tell your people all the time about, hey, I got the best church in the world. They're sweet people. And we want to come show them how sweet we are, Krispy Kreme style. Amen, because that's the heavenly donut. <clears throat> you say, preacher, I, I don't. I want to. I want to do something with that. I want to help. Uh, you can give to it specifically. Amen. Uh, you can. Uh, you can uh, deliver those deliveries. We need those drivers. Some people just walk in during the day. Amen. Or you can come help us put those stickers on there, gather material, and divvy that stuff out. And then that is July the second. That's this Thursday. Then on uh, <clears throat> July the 25th, and I'm going to turn over to Brother Chris. Uh, July the 25th, we are going to start our milk and bread ministry. So we're going to have some dates uh, available to bring the bread in. And, and maybe uh, you say, I, I, I don't want to buy bread. I don't want to buy milk. You know, and you say, I just give money. That's fine. We have people who love to shop. Amen. We have people who, who work at who work at these places that can hook a brother up, amen, that can let us know when things are on sale. <clears throat> and uh, But we can. We, what we're going to do is we're going to have four groups. We're going to need about 15 to 20 people, four gr amen. And we're going to need you to volunteer, talk to Sydney about that. And uh, we're going to have four tents. And as people drive up, we're going to hand them milk, bread, and the milk of bread of Jesus Christ, amen. And then we're going to love on them for a minute, and then we'll send them on down the road. Now we're going to have to have masks and gloves and all that junk. But wouldn't it be worth it if one of those people got saved? Amen? And that's what we want. That's what a church is supposed to do. Meet the needs of the people and give them Jesus. Brother Chris. Single Sunday? Yes. That's all right. Safari Sunday. I wanted to do this. In the jungle, the quiet jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Oh. Hey, listen, uh, perhaps you're at home or you're here today and you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You're not sure if you have. Pastor Corey and the church has put together this pamphlet. Please come and see me. We'll give you this pamphlet. If you're at home and you'd like to have it, just respond. And we'll. If there's no... I got a piece of candy hung in my jaw. We have Father's Day gifts. They're, they're going to be, uh, if we could have a couple of uh, young brothers out there to pass that out. But please, see us about this. Father, thank you. We've gotten windy here. Father, thank you and bless these that were here. We've seen such a tremendous outpouring of your Holy Spirit as we uh, sat and listened to our pastor as he preached. We pray that uh, the folks at home were moved as well. We pray that you would continue to overshadow these until such a time as we're able to be together again. And we ask this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Amen.